So for this video, we're going to look at how to scan the left limb of the pancreas. It's worth bearing in mind, as I mentioned before, that scanning the left limb of the pancreas in the dog is actually rather more tricky than scanning the same part of the pancreas in the cat. When we come to look at the right limb of the pancreas, that's actually considerably more easy to scan in the dog than it is in the cat. So, so the sort of reverse is true for the two, two different parts. As with locating the body, knowing the anatomical landmarks is really very important. Because the pancreas is such similar echogenicity to the surrounding tissue, it can be very, very difficult to actually make it out on the scan uh, separate to the, to the surrounding mesentery. So what we're going to do is make sure we know the landmarks and then we can, uh, we can be sure that we're looking at the region of the pancreas and if, there's, uh, if the pancreas stands out as obviously pathological, we have our answer. Again, if we can't readily visualise the pancreas but we can see all of the anatomical landmarks, then we should be able to be reasonably confident that ultrasonographically that organ is, is normal. Do remember the caveat that just because it's ultrasonographically normal doesn't necessarily mean it's not diseased. So from the point of view of finding the left limb of the pancreas, we're going to use several landmarks. We're going to use the stomach, the left kidney, the, um, potentially the uh, transverse colon cutting cross-section, and also the portal vein. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our probe in longitudinal plane, somewhere between sagittal and dorsal. So we're going to have the probe at 90 degrees to the body wall, we're going to start just cordial to the costal arch. What we'll do, if I just get a little bit more gel, we'll get, get a decent contact. We're going to find the spleen, and then we're going to just come up the body wall following the costal arch. If I just pause the image there, we can see on the left of the screen we've got gas shadowing from the stomach. So we can see the stomach wall, we can see spleen at the top of the image. And just creeping in on the right of the image, we can see uh, the transverse colon. Sometimes you can see right kid, uh, right, sorry, left kidney in this um, part of the image, or, or you can see the transverse colon. And what we're going to do is keep coming up the body wall until we pick up the portal vein. Unfortunately, if you've got lots of intestinal gas or you've got an obese animal, this little bit can be quite tricky because you sometimes find the gas gets in the way of the portal vein. Okay, so we can see on the image here we've got the portal vein coming in from the right hand side. Up at the top of the screen we can see the left kidney and then in the top left of the screen we can see a little bit of spleen. Just below the, the kidney and to the right of the spleen we can see the splenic vein coming from the kidney. Um, and we can look between the splenic vein and the portal vein and we can see a region of what looks to be essentially grey isoechogenicity compared to the surrounding tissue. That's the region of the left limb of the pancreas. So we try that again, we just span up, come up the body wall, we're looking for the appearance of the portal vein. There. And again, we can see portal vein on the, on the bottom right of the screen, left kidney, splenic vein and spleen in the top left. And we can see this region of um, grey isoechogenicity between the splenic vein and the portal vein, and that's the region of the left limb of the pancreas. 